Hey guys, what's going on dudes? It is David here. We are back with another video. Now in this video, guys, we shall be talking about the Dutch Grand Prix from Formula 1 that just finished a couple minutes ago. And one word I just got to say, chaos. Absolute chaos. Now, the winner of this race is kind of expected. It was Max Verstappen, but did we really expect that anybody else different? I mean, we had, for the final, the four, four, five laps, they were trying to give me hope and thinking that Fernando Alonso was going to win this race. But I knew, I knew that the hope was not real and Fernando Alonso was not going to win this race. Because if it was, I would be emotional right, right now because Fernando Alonso hasn't won a race in over 10 years. Imagine if you won this race, bro. I would have been on my knees crying because I love Fernando Alonso. He is my favorite driver. But still, this race had everything. Lap. One lap one, everybody starting on the dry tires. End of lap one, everybody coming. Some people coming in, some people staying out because it went straight into intermediates. Sergio Perez ended up uh, going in on the intermediate tires, gained 15 seconds, got to the lead. But then something interesting happened. The Red Bull team made their own call and decided to call Max Verstappen into the pits instead of Sergio Perez. That just don't. I just don't understand because. Every time I've seen a Formula One race, if you are ahead of your teammate, you get to make the call first. If you are in first place and your teammate is in second, you get to make the call first. But the team decided to put Max Verstappen on the undercut, and he eventually did undercut Sergio Perez, which I don't really think was that fair because Sergio Perez had legitimately got to the lead through good strategy, and then he just got it ruined because of Max Verstappen. Yes, Verstappen was catching Perez. I will say that. He was catching Perez. But still, I just don't think that's really fair on Sergio Perez. So I, ju I just don't really agree on that. All right, continuing on. Race by, you know, the race continues and it looks like it's just going to be another boring race with Max Verstappen leading. Car Sergio, uh, Charles Leclerc having a problem with this car. Charles Leclerc issues, it's just reminding me of how Fernando Alonso was at Ferrari. Fernando Alonso was giving his heart and soul for that Ferrari team, winning majority of the races, battling Sebastian Vettel for championships, and yet he was still not able to do it. And then towards the end of his Ferrari career, he started having issues with this car. And considering that Verstappen is basically the Vettel of this era, and Charles Leclerc, I would say, is probably the Alonso of this era because in the Ferrari, he's been giving, he's been giving Verstappen most of the challenges like Alonso was when Vettel was dominating and set, and yet still not can do anything about it. But continuing on, Leclerc out of the race, a couple laps later, like 10, 20 laps later, then we get a, hear, a call on the radio saying, there's going to be rain he heading in. And the rain hit hard. The rain hit hard. Everybody, There were some people that went on to the West. I believe when they were pitting for Indominates, Esteban Ocon went on to West, and he was complaining to his team about why did you put me on the strategy? You put me on the worst strategy, but then the rain started hitting harder. You saw our drivers start going off in turn one. Hamilton, Sonoda, I believe Gasly at one point went off. Sergio Perez went off, and Alonso eventually passed Sergio Perez. But then the big incident happened where Guan Yu Zhou ended up not being able to stop this car, headed straight into the turn one barrier, and retired from this race. Then Sergio Perez got called in to come into the pits. They red flagged the race at that point, which means Sergio Perez at the time was sixth place. But due down to the last scoring loop, Sergio Perez actually went back to third. This is where he was after he got passed by Fernando Alonso after spinning out. And then when the restart happened, the hope was there. The hope that Fernando Alonso was going to win this race was there. But then it died. And I was just like, Master Sapman is going to win this race again. And that's it won. The results are right here next to me. Alonso finishing P2, Gasly in third. Pierre Gasly and Esteban Ocon finishing in the points after what's been a tumultuous week for Alpine and that team. It's just absolutely amazing to see. Gasly was so passionate on the radio, and I very much love to see that. He was saying he was cursing on live television, and it was just so good to see because you know that meant so much to him and the team. You know that meant so much to him and the team if you hear that passionate type type of voice. Sergio Perez got a five second time penalty for speeding in the pit, pit lane. He was originally third, finished fourth. Carlos Sainz in fifth, Hamilton in sixth, Norris in seventh, Albon in eighth, Piastri in ninth, Ocon finishing the final points. The rest of the finishers were 
Lonstro in 11th, Hulkenberg in 12th, Sonoda in 13th, uh, Sonoda actually, sorry, I was about to say Sonoda in 13th, but Sonoda actually got a penalty for speeding in the pit lane as well, and dropped down to 16th. So Liam Lawson in his first race, replacing Daniel Ricciardo, beats his teammate, finishes 13th, Magnussen in 14th, Botas in 15th, uh, Sonoda in 16th, and the rest of the drivers that did not finish this race was George Russell having a puncture after getting involved in an incident on the restart, finishing in P17, Guan Yu Zhou, the crash when it started raining hard, Charles Leclerc with the car issue, and then Logan Sargent having another car issue that eventually led to the crash. But that is the finishers, and I just want to end this Formula 1 race review just saying this. If Formula 1 races can be like this almost every week, it'll be absolutely amazing. Because this race had exciting moments, but the only thing that I feel like stopped this race from being a 10 out of 10 race was the finish and the winner of the race. Had it been an unexpected finisher, let's say Alonso or Gasly wins this race, oh, it's a definite 10. But on a scale from 1 to 10, I have to give the Formula 1 Dutch Grand Prix an 8 out of 10.